If you read the video's title, then you probably already know what we're talking about today. This is something that was first leaked over a year ago via updates to the Steam DB files, and comes at the end of an almost week-long server maintenance period for Skyrim's in-game mod services. That's right, today we're talking about Skyrim's new paid mod feature, which Bethesda very quietly shadow dropped. This new system comes part of Skyrim Special Edition slash Anniversary Edition's new 12GB update, which released on Tuesday, December 5th, 2023. I really wish we had gotten some sort of official announcement before all this happened, and I get it. Paid mods have a really bad track record when it comes to Bethesda's games. So that was definitely part of their decision to be a little bit more tight-lipped about it prior to its release. And yes, the in-game announcement tells us about this, and they did make a post on social media a few hours later. But I feel like an official announcement leading up to its launch goes a long way to help alleviate concerns. And avoid some of the people who are gonna shout from the rooftops that Bethesda is banning free mods or suing the Nexus. Neither of which are happening, by the way, but I saw multiple people say this last week, when there was still little more than speculation and a couple minor leaks about the new program. Fortunately, Bethesda's site does include more details on the new system, dubbed Creations. That way they can claim they didn't release paid mods. We'll get into some of the details on this later, as this is more so focused on the application process for mod authors looking to join the program. My PC copy of Special Edition is not currently up to date, since I'm still waiting on an update for Skyrim Script Extender and Address Library, so instead I booted up my Series X so that we could take a look at this today. Creations is a system that will be available across all versions of Special and Anniversary Editions including last gen's Xbox One and PS4, as well as PC for Steam, Epic, and the Microsoft Store, and the current gen of consoles, the Series S, X, and the PlayStation 5. PlayStation will not receive creations that have new assets, meaning new models, textures, voice acting, and so on, which has been a restriction on the platform since mods first launched. I was hoping that the paid mod system would be a way around this, but I guess not. On Skyrim's main menu, you'll note that we have a new menu item, Creations, which rolls the free mods, previous Creation Club content, and the new paid creations all into one unified page. Like Creation Club, these new paid creations are bought via credits, which you buy with money. 100 credits is approximately one US dollar, and I'll be using that general conversion when discussing these creations today. It's also worth noting that on Bethesda's article, they mentioned a change to pricing and naming for credits that will go into effect on December 12th. Right now at the program's launch, there are a total of seven paid creations, and I was pleasantly surprised by the amount of content that some of them added. You have the East Empire Expansion, a quest and gameplay system that allows you to hire a personal merchant and claim ruins and mines for the company, getting a cut of the profits in the process, with new items, voice acting, and compatibility for locations added by other mods. This is priced at $7. We have Winterfrost, a new player home with interchangeable features and a lot of displays for replicas of unique items found across the game, for $6. We have Katya, a fully voiced follower with 1,200 lines of new dialogue, priced at $4, the cheapest price point that we have for the current lineup of paid creations. Then, we have Legendary Dungeons Dwarven Delves, which recreates two dungeons from the Elder Scrolls Online, each of which features a second secret dungeon as well. Once again, this is priced at $4. After this, we have the Arquebus, a gun. But it's probably the best looking and most fitting firearm that I've ever seen added to Skyrim. This comes with a new dungeon, new quest, and a way to add it to the level list via said quest. Not to mention several unique variations of the weapon as well. Six dollars. Coming in next is the Aldmeri Anti-Mage, a new armor set worn by Thalmor Justiciars, which can also be crafted via the Elven Smithing perk. Four dollars. And finally, Shade Tree Lodge, another player home, which comes with organized and labeled storage, a fishing spot, displays, and mannequins. Five dollars. Now, it should be noted that while Bethesda themselves provide a selection of price points to choose from, the creator is the one choosing and setting that price point. So for me, stuff like Katya as a fully voiced companion, or Legendary Dungeons having two dungeons as well as two mini dungeons, both at four dollars each, 
is a way better deal than a $5 or $6 player home. $4 for a single armor set when alternative armors was $1 each also doesn't feel like a great value. $6 for the firearm, but that's also with a new dungeon, quest, and unique variations? Okay, I can understand the price, but personally I would prefer 4 or $5. The East Empire expansion sits as the priciest option, at $7. But having a questline, voice acting, and a gameplay system that allows you to claim locations for the business? Okay, I can understand that price point. This is less to do with Bethesda, but I do recommend that creators in this program think a little bit about the pricing. You're making royalties off of these packs, and might be doing so for years and years to come. You might be better off setting a slightly lower price point, which will hopefully entice more players to make these purchases. But for all we know, maybe $4 is the lowest price point that Bethesda allows, since we haven't seen anything lower than that. If that is the lowest, come on Bethesda you can go lower. Now, let's talk about the webpage, where you can apply for the creation program, which actually answers and addresses a lot of the concerns that I had about the paid mods, back when Juice had first announced this system over a year ago. I had a lot of concerns about paid mods requiring free mods in order to work, problems with AI voice acting, resold assets or content, and so on. In order to start listing creations for sale, a mod author has to apply to become what is called a verified creator. This requires a few things, including a portfolio and experience with modding Bethesda games, or at least a willingness to learn. Verified creators will earn royalties on their releases, unlike Creation Club packs in which those creators were paid upfront before the pack's release. Even becoming a verified creator does not guarantee that everything you make will be added to the storefront, as there will be a vetting process before each item is approved and made available to the public. Creations must be standalone. They cannot require other creations or mods in order to function, free or paid. Creations must be all new, meaning that you cannot sell previously free mods, even your own. Creations cannot contain anything made via AI. And while there is no requirement to be lore friendly, it is something that Bethesda does appreciate. Voice acting is not required, but it is allowed. And very interestingly, cannot be localized in multiple languages. The whole language localization thing was the real reason why the old Creation Club packs weren't voiced. And Bethesda makes it clear that being a verified creator in no way restricts you from being able to make more free mods as well. The whole FAQ section of the site, which I'll link to in the description, answers so many of the questions and concerns that I had. My immediate concerns were about content quality, about people selling assets, AI voice acting, or requiring you to buy this and that mod in order for theirs to work. And one of my chief concerns was that some authors would just be uploading as much as they could without any care in the world, in an attempt at what they might see as an easy cash grab. But having it so that creations are vetted and approved, making this a more curated system, is exactly what I had hoped for, as it ultimately protects the player, who's spending their hard-earned money in the first place. The one thing it doesn't mention, but that I would be really curious to see, is the percentage of the sale that the creator gets, versus Bethesda's cut. This being a curated system makes me happier with its implementation. I just think creators need to be a little bit more mindful about pricing. As someone who was very opposed to Skyrim's first attempt at paid modding on Steam almost a decade ago, this is probably one of the best ways they could have implemented this. My biggest hope is that with all the server and backend updates over the past week, that we're going to be able to avoid my least favorite thing about Creation Club. That being that every time Bethesda added a new item to the store, the game's EXE was updated, meaning we had to wait for an SKSE update in turn. My hope is that these paid creations are supposed to be more akin to mods, and will avoid that update issue. Because having to update the game every single time a new paid creation is added just isn't sustainable for anyone, the devs or the players. But why the very quiet launch, with no significant announcement beforehand? Even now, with its release, Bethesda is saying they're looking at other games to extend the system to, but right now it's just for Skyrim. To me, it's very clear that the plan is to test this on Skyrim while they get the system ready for Starfield, which will likely have the storefront in place the moment mod support goes live, 
sometime next year. I do think that having everything under the singular umbrella of creations is gonna confuse some people. And already, I'm seeing people claim that because they bought Anniversary Edition, they should be getting every paid creation launching under this program. The wording of Anniversary Edition, or the Anniversary Upgrade, was for all existing Creation Club content, including the new content that was launched as part of Anniversary Edition. That is all. But let's talk about what this could mean for the state of free mods, as I know people are concerned about that. Honestly, I don't see this new system changing much. Skyrim still supports third-party mods via the Nexus and other sites. Authors can make both free and paid content without issue, and existing mods can't be sold. With the approval process for creations, I don't think paid mods will ever be able to overtake free mods. And with some of the restrictions, such as not being able to require SKSE or any other mod, I think a lot of mod authors will stick with the Nexus, so they can continue to make mods that suit their vision. Already, I've seen several mod authors say that they have no plans to ever join the program. Others saying that they even plan to remove their free mods from Bethesda Net as to not show any support for this tiered mod system at all. I don't think we should be worried about any significant change to free modding. And ultimately, the success of this whole paid creations venture will depend on how much the community embraces it. Or shuns it. Given how Creation Club is still viewed as a mixed bag, it's hard to say how creations are going to perform over time, and how much Bethesda is willing to invest into it, since they need to have employees dedicated to approvals, vetting, and so on. But this first wave of creations, small as it may be, has more fully voice-acted content than I ever would have expected. If anything, it's the kind of content that I wanted to see from the original Creation Club, and in terms of the new quests, they're already priced at a much more reasonable rate than Creation Club was for similar types of content. I'll be keeping an eye on Creations, and I'll see what the program has in store for us. Like my Skyrim Saturday videos, my focus will always be on quests, especially voiced ones. So, if you're curious about some of these new paid packs, stay tuned, as I will start covering them once I can safely update my copy on Steam. But don't expect any house reviews. I'm not paying five bucks for a player home. Ultimately, it does feel a little weird to have paid mods added to a 12-year-old game. But if there's any game that it makes sense for, Skyrim's the one. I mean, hey, Minecraft has a fairly similar paid mod platform one that allows financial stability for some of its largest creators. If this paid creation program can do the same for Skyrim mod authors, I for one will be very happy. As always, thank you for watching. If you'd like to see me play games other than Skyrim, check out my streams at twitch.tv slash zero period productions. If you'd like to support the channel, check out the Patreon or the YouTube memberships. And if you liked this video, share it with your friends. If you hated it, uh, share it with your enemies. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.